Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide to Dragon Quest. So, I'm going to be playing Dragon Quest, which originally came out for the Nintendo in 1986, as it says here, at least in the United States, and it was called Dragon Warrior. This is the first one, Dragon Warrior 1 or Dragon Quest, and we're going to play it on the Nintendo Switch because for about five bucks, they've released a update to the game that just improves uh, some quality of life issues with some better graphics. Now, I myself haven't really played this version hardly at all. I just booted it up to see if it'd be worth doing a video on, but I wanted to do a complete beginner's guide to Dragon Quest. And I felt like this was the best way to do it. Now, if people want to see me play the original, um, I could totally do that as well. I have that too. But the nice thing about this version of the game that they have updated is that they have allowed you to quick save the game so you can save and close uh, without having to go back to the king and get into the imperial record or whatever, uh, which is great for just, you know, convenience and not in terms of like being able to stop playing the game when you want. So that's awesome. There's more story, a little bit, some more fun tongue-in-cheek dialogue, and there's a tutorial system that explains some of the mechanics of the game better. There's also a map that you can access with the controller without having to use the physical printed map, which I actually have, but I like having this map because it does show your location at the very least, which is awesome. And the final thing, and there, there might be some more small things um, that has been done, is that it Re increases your experience gained through a lot of the combat so it just reduces the grind of the game so you it doesn't take as long of just grinding because this is one of the grindiest the original is one of the grindiest games um you know where you just there's nothing you can do skill wise you just have to get to a certain level uh have enough gear to make it to the next area which requires you to fight enemies again and again and again and if you're down with that, then play the original. But if you want it to be slightly sped up for you uh, so that you don't have to spend the time of your life doing that as intensively, then try this. Also, of course, you get the updated graphics, uh, you know, in the style that they do Dragon Quest now with the Dragon Ball Z artist and all that stuff. So I think it's a great package where it's really like a love letter to the game if you played it in the 80s like I did. So you get that old school vibe but with some nice quality of life and slightly updated graphics. The graphics are more like Super Nintendo, you know, caliber. It's not like they, they're blown out of the water. So let's check it out. So the first thing you do is you start a new adventure log. You pick your save file and you pick the name of your character. So this is not just the name of your save, but this is what name do you want your character to be? And we're going to go with, um, you know, Dr... Do, 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 do. And go over here, Dr. Incomp. I love that you, you can use a period. So many games do not let you use a period, and it just breaks my heart. All right, go. Now, this is important. This is the message speed. At first, you might want to set this to the slower end, but this also affects how quickly battle moves. And with the grind in this game and a lot of these early RPGs, you, at least I personally, want this to be faster. So I'm going to go to four, but once we start getting into combat, I might speed it up. I have it at about two at the file that I'm playing on for my main game, just playing off camera. And I'm going to keep the music and the sound effects at five. That's great. The king says, Dr. Incompetent, scion of the bloodline of Erdrich, hero of legend. Long have I awaited thy coming. So you can immediately see the character graphics are the most touched up. They actually look more like, you know, the pixel count of a PlayStation 1 thing. Everything else is like very close to Nintendo, Super Nintendo uh, in terms of color palette, pixelation, etc. So you get the old school vibe, but the dialogue boxes in terms of accessibility, they're so much easier to read than the old school Nintendo dialog boxes, so that's also a selling point. Plus the game is, I got it on sale for like $3, so it's well worth it. In days of yore, 
thy revered ancestor did receive of the almighty goddess the sphere of light. By its power was our world rid of the menace which did beset it. Yet, alas, some few years past there did arise a new threat, the Dragon Lord. With his cunning he did steal away the sphere of light from us, plunging the land into darkness once more. Should this state of affairs be suffered to continue, the night must surely take unrelenting hold and our realm perish. So I say unto thee, doctor and competent of the bloodline of heroes, vanquish the accursed Dragon Lord and reclaim the sphere of light. So this is old school plot. It's like straight up. World's going to end. You're from the hero's bloodline. You need to get something called the Sphere of Light to defeat someone named the Dragon Lord. I get it. In the chests or yonder, wilt thou find items to aid thee on thy quest. Take what thou wilt with my blessing. Partake thee also of the wisdom of those loyal subjects gathered here in my throne room. Doubt not, but that their knowledge will serve thee as well as any shield. May the goddess guide thee to victory and return thee unto us ere long, brave doctor incompetent. All right, great. So you can move around and you can use the analog stick or the directional pad, whichever you like. And you can open the chest with A. This is also, um, I was reading about this on Reddit, but the game has been updated a couple of times. I think there was a version released for the Game Boy Color. And then there's this version. There might have been a Super Nintendo remake as well thrown in there. Anyway, one of the other major things that they did was you used to, and this was notorious, they changed this with later Dragon Warriors, but you used to have to push A to open a box uh, of commands and then chest or stairs like would be on there to open a chest instead of just pushing A to interact with everything. So that's another tedious thing that they've wrinkled out. And we get 120 coins. This is These are not randomized, by the way. So you get a torch and you get... A key. All right. So we get these three items and we're ready to go. But as the king said, we should talk to everybody. Does thou know aught of poor Princess Gwalen? Uh, I don't. Princess Gwalen is the sole heir of his majesty the king. Since the untimely death of her majesty the queen, Gwalen hath been our beloved ruler's sole source of comfort. Alas, a half year prior to this day, foul monsters saw fit to tear the princess from the bosom of we, her people. His majesty speaketh not of the tragedy, but tis plain the loss doth pain him deeply. Brave, doctor incompetent, I beg of thee, deliver the princess from her plight. All right, so we got to rescue the princess. We can do that. What do these dudes say? If thou hast partaken of the contents of each and every chest, thou shalt by now have found a magic key. Use this key to open yonder door, and thou shalt lose it forever. Yet use it thou must. For beyond that door, thine adventure begins in earnest. So don't ask why the door to the throne room is locked from the inside. A little creepy, but we got to use our key. Um, oops, okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't really want to talk to you. I want to go here. By the way, a little thought bubble with an exclamation point will appear over the object or person that you're going to be targeting with your interaction, so you can use that. And yes, indeed, magic keys, you get them in this game, and you use them, and they're gone and there's lots of locked doors that all take a magic key, generally, and got to get more magic keys. That's all there is to it. If thou wouldest rest from thy quest a while, thou must request of the king that thy deeds be recorded in an adventure log. So you got to, if you want to save your game proper, you got to go up the steps. You got to go talk to the king. The, and let's do that right now just to save it. So we'll go back. We'll talk to the king here. And he says, come before me once more while thou art ready to embark upon thy quest. I shall await thy return. Oh, no, he won't let us save it right now. Try, try again. Oh, okay. Never mind. So, for some reason, you have to leave the town maybe before he'll let you save it. So, what you can do with the king is he'll tell you how many experience points you need to reach the next level. And then he'll let you save it on save file 1, 2, or 3. And you can save it on whichever you like. But again, another thing that you have with this version is you can push A and open up this little sub-menu, and it shows you in the upper left your options, in the upper right your gold. In the bottom right, it shows you your name, your hit points, H, your magic points, M, and your level, 1. And now, if I go into miscellaneous, uh, I get to a place where I can equip different items. I can change the settings, like the message speed, uh, the music, stuff like that, the sound level. Traveler's Tips is the tutorial. It's super useful. I recommend checking it out. And then here's the money quick save. 
So you could quick save the game. It says your adventure will be recorded in the quick save log and any existing quick save data will be overwritten. Are you sure? And you say yes. And then it lets you like leave if you want to just quit or continue. I'm going to continue. So you can't abuse the quick save too much because you can only have one of them. So it I like that they make it a non-abusive, like I'm using an emulator and doing state save kind of stuff. It's just an extra save you only have one copy of so you can close down the game and switch to another game or, you know, your switch is running out of batteries or whatever it might be. It's great. Let's talk to these peeps. In days of yore, lo, the fair city of Tantigel, which is what we're in, was a veritable fairground wherein the merrymakers of the world did play. Sounds amazing. And yet now... We are beset on all sides by foul fiends, and the golden days are no more. Ah, sweet memory. It is. It is sweet memory. Oh, princess, princess, where art thou? Could it be that the foul fiends who took thee have taken thy young life also? Well, we hope not. Nay, we cannot, we must not surrender to despair. Brave doctor incompetent, I prithee, forget all that I said. Henceforth, hope and hope alone shall guide me. Indeed. Get, get your thoughts up into the rainbows. I ply the trade of the traveling merchant. Lo, countless of our brotherhood are fallen at the hands of roaming beasts of late. Full many of friends have I lost, sigh. Merely to speak of them bringeth tears to mine eyes. Ugh, it's a terrible time. Didst thou hear the rumors? I did not. They speak of a town laid to ruin by marauding monsters. Right. So the princess is captured. The dragon lord's coming to make eternal darkness. Monsters are roaming the lands. Merchants are dying. It's terrible. Sniff. Oh, princess. Princess Gwaylin. This guy is on the ground. Just overcome with emotion. If thou questest in caves or dungeons, dank, a torch or two will serve thee well, friend. It is in the places where the darkness doth penetrate most deeply that the fiends do throng thickest. All right, fair enough. So you can search these pots, search all of them. Nothing here. Nothing here, but in the far left, got a free medicinal herb, which we can use to heal ourselves. Great. What's this guy about? When dark doth spread across the land, light shall return by Erdrick's hand. That's my ancestor. O oh, almighty goddess, we pray that the ancient teachings hold true. May thy light shine upon Brave Doctor Incompetence quest. I hope so. All right, so you can continue exploring the town, talk to people, get a real feel for it. Uh, what do you say, buddy? The first priority must ever to be to hone thy skills by battling beasts. As thou gainest in experience, thy level shall increase, and so too shall thy might. And that's it. That's why you talk to these people, because they've got bang-up clues like that one, which is basically, hey... You know, you need to uh, go outside and grind monsters to get enough money to level up. Uh, money to buy gear, experience to level up, I should say. And that is true. Never more true than in a game like this. Would that I might pass all the remaining days of my life alone with my beloved, yet the knowledge that a monster might rob us of this simple joy at any moment weigheth heavily upon my mind. What does she say? To be alone with my beloved is to forget all that... Uh, threateneth this world. But alas, I cannot put our plight entirely from my thoughts, for my lover informs me that were our world to be destroyed, our love too must surely perish. Woof. Oh, even young lovers. Interrupted. No door may be opened without a key, but alas, tis the curse of the magic key to crumble into dust after but a single use. Yeah. So we can't get over here, we can't go there. Time to leave the town. Uh, you can leave the town from the bottom or just from up here by going up. And now we're on the world map. I love about Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior, that you can see right down to the southeast is the end castle of the game. It's that close. You know, like, that's where the Dragon Lord's going to return, basically, in that place surrounded by the purple swamp of doom. So, it's very close, but we can't cross the water, so not that close. And... I can push X on this screen to get the map. You will see that points of interest are glowing. Uh, towns are glowing orange squares. Caves are glowing pink squares. So very useful. Or caves, dungeons, bad places, not towns, are pink, I guess. And 
I am represented by the Chimera Ring. It's really hard to see, but over the first castle, uh, there's a little wing. That's me. Now, let's go to this town right here, to the uh, northwest of Tantajo, and we get to the, the town. This is also, they call it Tantajo. It's just, you know, the castle town of Tantajo bids thee welcome. So this is the town and the castle. The town here has an inn where we can rest to get our hit points back. It costs three gold, so it's very affordable. It has a weapon shop. This is our first priority of business. Welcome unto thee, friend. Prithee, make thy way into the premises and state thy business or the counter. Indeed. Thou art welcome, wanderer, in this our humble armory. How, pray, may we be of use to thee this day. So I have 120 gold I'm going to buy. This is where you want to spend your money. Now, I highly recommend that you figure out something that will be uh, a good upgrade for you quickly. Because it seems like 120 gold is no problem. But while they may have tweaked the experience you gain, they do not really tweak, at least in my experience, understanding of it, the gold that you gain. Getting 180 gold for this copper sword is going to take you a long time of fighting. So I've got the bamboo spear. That's all I've got. I could upgrade to the leather suit to get four more defense and then try to upgrade to the oaken club to get some more attack. Or I could go to the shield, but it's the same defense as the suit. And if you want to get all defense, you could buy the, the shield and the clothes. But I'm going to buy, right away, uh, the Oaken Club. And I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to equip it. Okay, and then I'm going to sell my Bamboo Spear. And he's going to give us five coins. You'd never need that again. And I'm just going to push B to close. So now I have 65 gold. And I'm going to go try to earn five gold to buy myself the leather suit to get some defense. I want more attack so I could kill enemies faster, and I want more defense because this game is difficult at first level. So right now, we're the lowest of the low. The tutorials explain what your stats do, but if I check my status, which I get to by pushing A and going to status, you can see I'm level one. I have equipped an Oaken Club, and that's it. My strength, agility, resilience, hit points, MP, attack, and defense are all listed there. And it's worth noting, basically, strength governs your damage, but so does the attack power of your weapon. So it's like you aggregate your weapon and your strength to get a reflection of how much damage you will do, and you aggregate your resilience and your armor to get defense, which tells you how much incoming damage you're going to mitigate. You start with no magic points, you start with no spells, and you can use items from this screen by going to items and using your herb and it tells you it's going to restore 20 to 35 hit points i have 15 so i don't really need it right now it's a one-time use same thing for the torch i'm not in a dungeon i don't need that i'm going to walk around town and i'm going to walk just right around the starting town i'm not going to go too far because i don't want to get into a fight that we can't handle all right so in the starting area mostly what you're going to get are she slimes, which are this kind of orangish color, or regular slimes, which are blue. And either of those are fine. I'll attack. Boom. We did three points of damage. It's dead. Victory. And we get two experience points and four gold. Great. So you can wander further away if you want. You can go further north or follow the map and see what's available. But Dragon Quest does an amazing job of fencing you in to areas that uh, are appropriate for you. And you'll know immediately when you go too far because the enemies will become incredibly difficult. Now, bam, I'm doing good damage. I upgraded my weapon. We did get hit right there, but only for one. And that's fine. We got four gold coins. I'm going to go in, uh, look at the map. You can see where I'm at, kind of to the uh, just south by southwest of the opening town and if i go down here it's all blocked by mountains i actually can't go any further this is as far as i can go in this area so i have to kind of go north because as you can see over here if i want to try to go to the east i'm blocked by the waters and this mountain range so i'm going to attack the she slime 
and kill it really quickly. You want a good weapon so you kill these slimes in one turn, which is what I like. And then good armor will come, actually, good armor right now. We already have 77 gold, so I'm going to go into the town. And I'm going to quickly buy the leather suit. All right. And I'm going to equip it, yes. And I'm going to leave. We don't have any armor to even sell him back that we've replaced. By the way, I really didn't explore the rest of the town because I wanted to get out and show you combat, but there's plenty more people to talk to. And right down in here, there is an item shop where you can buy um, medicinal herbs, torches, and dragon scales. And uh, I, at this point would only really want to be buying herbs and, and uh, torches, but I'm okay with the one torch and herb that I have. I'm not super, super reliant on that. There's lots of other characters that you can speak with to get some more info here. This is the guy you want to come talk to if you ever get cursed. Come talk to him. And I'm going to go out into the business of leveling up, but I am going to go to MISC and I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to adjust the message speed to about two. This isn't good if you're in town and you're talking to people maybe, but in battle, watch what, what the difference is. I found one to be too fast myself. I'm going to go up here in this forest area and just see if I can fight. You'll notice that the background for the battle that you're in will change based on what kind of a tile you're on in the overworld so if you're in the grasslands it's different than if you're in the forest uh you get this cool forest background this is a regular slime i'm gonna attack and you see that all of the text about us defeating it and everything just disappear quickly but we got enough experience to you hear this special music we've leveled up we got level two our strength went up by two hit points by six and we got two more coins so now we're doing even more damage when we attack and i think at level two i feel Good enough, I should say, to go up. So I'm just going to walk up here, and I'm going to start exploring to the north. And if I keep going to the northwestish in this desert, there's a cave. I'm going to go inside the cave. And immediately when you're inside the cave, it's dark. You'll see that the your area of light is very small, so it's hard to get around. You can't use your map in the cave, but you can push A, go to items, and use your torch. And we light the torch. And now you can see that my area of light is much larger, so it's very, very easy to navigate this cave now, or at least easier. The torch will not go out until you leave the dungeon, so as long as you stay in here, your torch is good to go. Now, this is a big dungeon in terms of, like, nice, you know, two wide hallways, but if you go around, you'll quickly see that... There is nothing in here except one real way to go, which is down the steps. Everything else is, you know, kind of a dead end. And you go over here, you come down, and we get into this floor. And if you follow it, you'll see that this is a dead end. It's much harder to navigate if you don't have a torch because you won't see the dead ends as clearly. Uh, you And because the hallways are so big, uh, it doesn't, your light is even less valuable in a way so i'm gonna go over here and this grassy area you'll find this marker and it's a stone tablet and it says i am erdrick hear me well bearer of my blood heir to my destiny if you would reach the evil island visible from tantagil's shore you will require the three sacred artifacts gather them and you may yet cross to that accursed isle which we saw before the dragon lord's place and destroy the source of all evil as i too did so long ago before my passing i entrusted the three objects to three great sages if the fates have been kind their descendants guard them still when evil rules the ill-starred isle once more gather the hallowed triad and strike a blow for the cause of light no doubt those of the line of the sages await you somewhere in this world seek them out blood of my blood child of my children go forth and fulfill your destiny so this cave doesn't have any monsters in it you're not going to fight here because it's protected at least what i like to think is it's protected by erdrick and now it just gives you more information about your objective 
your overall quest and your mission as the scion of Erdrick. What we have to do, we got to go talk to three sages and get the three artifacts so that we can even get to the Isle to confront the Dragon Lord before the darkness threatens to return and use, presumably, the Sphere of Light. And here we go. We're out. Great. So, if you push X to open up the map, you'll see that there is a town to the upper left, and they sell uh, much better weapons and armor, but it's really, really expensive. So you can go price it out, but really what we need to do right now is just get into some fights. I want to show you some more difficult enemies if I can. Most of this is slimes, which is why you want the um, message log cranked up, because you don't need it to display that information about how much gold and experience you get. It is worth noting it's randomized, like how much gold you will get. Your experience is not, but the gold is. And the initiative is based on your agility and their agility, so they might get to go first sometimes. Uh, and the damage that you do and they do is, of course, rolled. But this is... Okay, here's a ghost. A ghost is actually very difficult. It doesn't have that many hit points, so if you can hit it and kill it quickly, then you're okay. But it's nimble, it can evade, and it hits for a lot. So I'll try to attack it and see how it dodged, and then it hit us for four. I'll try to attack again, and we hit it for two, and it hit us for three. It's going to kill us if I don't hit right now. Okay, so this is your opportunity. We didn't kill it. One more shot, we'll kill it. Or if we miss, we probably we, we have an opportunity to die right here. The ghost, I want to show you this because it's really challenging. The ghost is a difficult enemy. Even right here at this point in the game, with what we have, this is hard. Now, I could use, of course, my medicinal herb, but it's too expensive. Um, and I'm going to go for broke. I'm going to attack. And it actually attacked us first and took us down to one. How about that? But we survived. And we get four experience and eight gold, which is great. But now we have, you know, one hit point. So I could use my herb, but I'm just going to run back to town. And once I get back closer to town... Uh-oh. I was going to say the enemies get easier, easier, but I was so far away that I found a Drakey. So a Drakey is not that hard, but at one hit point, it's terrifying, so we need to run. You either run or that happens. So you do not get to run 100% of the time. And if that happens, like they block your path and they attack and you're at one, it's over. So what happens when you die? Well, when you die, you appear before the king. And the king is like, but what is this, brave doctor incompetent? Defeat doth ill become thee. That thy recklessness vexeth me, I shall not deny, but there is naught for it. Thou must be set upon thy path anew. Yet swear to me that then, when next thou suffereth, thou wilt straightway to the nearest town and seek out an inn to get our hit points back. I pray most fervently that thou will not require such aid of me again in the future. Earn another nine experience, and thou shalt attain a new level. Uh, and let's save the game. Now he's going to let us save it. Uh, so we'll say yes, and we'll save it uh, right here. And we're going to continue. So what happens when you die? You appear at the king, but you also lose half your gold. So that's an incredibly punishing effect. And losing half of our gold is brutal. About the cost, actually, of using the medicinal herb. So I was very cavalier in not using my herb to heal myself. And when we get third level, we actually get a healing spell to make that even more manageable. But uh, I wanted to show you death because it's going to happen where you miss a few times or the enemy gets a critical hit or whatever it is and you can't run and you just die. And luckily in this game, it doesn't take you back to your previous save. It takes you in front of the king. So you want to save to preserve your money but it's not the complete end of the world especially if you've just you know spent all your money then you're like well okay but no big deal you don't lose experience you just lose money so what you want to do and that's why you don't want to be far away from the town you want to be close to town so that like if you're out of healing items and tragedy strikes you can get back to the inn quickly remember it only takes three gold for the inn that being said close to the town are only usually slimes and you know, you need to balance your risk-reward. Like, you don't want to sit here fighting slimes. You can. It's, like, the safest way possible to level. But at the same time, 
they're giving you one experience, you know, and they're giving you like, uh, what, two gold sometimes? One experience, two gold, right. So it's not that compelling. If you instead, let's try to fight a Drakey again. Something like that. Or a She Slime. Okay, killed her in one shot and uh, get two experience and four cold. So she's just double the blue slime and just at almost basically as easy. So we, we at least, at the very least, we want her. I'm going to go hunting right by this cave. Keep close to the town if I can. I'd like to get a Drakey. I didn't, but we're really, really close to level three. And we can just blast her away in, you know, one battle. But you'll notice if I'm getting four or two gold a time, or eight if I'm lucky on a ghost and can survive. Although the ghost really isn't worth my while at the moment. You see how long, ooh, we got a critical hit. It's going to take for us to buy a copper sword or, you know, a shield or something. So this, that's where the grind is absolutely real. But we are very close to getting third level. I mean, super close. Here we are. And at third level, we get two strength, two agility, one resilience, two hit points, four MP, and we learn to heal spell and two coins. Now, I'm not entirely sure if the stats you get when you level up are fixed or are random. I, I know that my stats at first level were fixed, but I'm not sure if they were at second level with my previous game. Now, here's a Drakey. Let's fight this. So we hit it for five, and we kill it in one shot. So we got to go first, we killed it, and they give three experience and six gold. So very, very predictable, right? One and two, two and four, three and six, or four and eight. You could see how the balance of the experience and the gold is shaking out for us. Um, so maybe the gold isn't randomized. Maybe I lied about that. I felt like it was, but now that I'm thinking about it, I might just be completely imagining that. Now, if we can go first and we hit, then that fight isn't that challenging for us. All right. Yeah, it looks fixed. It doesn't look randomized at all. So just I think I was thinking about Final Fantasy one. Take that out uh, out of your mind and just know that you see how we're stronger now. We're doing seven damage now, like we did five roughly to that guy before because our strength went up by two. Our resilience also went up. So if you check our status, you'll see that our defense has gone up uh, as a result of that. And we have some M uh, our maximum hit points is actually 23 and we're at 21 right now so if i want to use my spell i can use healing and it's just the same as the medicinal herb it's 25 to 30 which is so much and it's 3 mp i can only cast it once uh, but it's incredibly good so this way you can stay out longer and you're much more uh stout with a healing spell so everyone this is a good place to end the first episode we got a new weapon we got a new set of armor we explored the first two towns, we found a tablet to learn the main quest, and we got third level and got our first spell. We even died and talked about the penalty of death. I hope you found this to be useful and fun. This game is tremendous. If you like old school games and don't mind going back, they really didn't change very much of the game at all. Uh, in a version like this, I, I think it's well worth your time, and if you played this when you were a kid like I did, and you want to revisit it, this is a great point of entry that's not as tedious um, as either trying to get an old Nintendo to work. It is on the NES Mini, which is great, uh, but I like the fact that they did expedite some of the stuff and give you a quick save. So that's my vote. I hope you found this to be useful and fun. And if you have any questions about the game, please post those in the comments below. Let me know if you want to see more of this game and any of your thoughts about Dragon Quest slash Dragon Warrior. I'd love to uh, chat with you about the game. I read all the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.